Manham City, Australia, a woman named Jody Myers age 20 years, and her fiancé Neil Archer age 29 years, celebrated Jody's stepfather's birthday. The party went smoothly, but the couple was not happy. In fact, Neil didn't want to attend the birthday party, and just sat in the car. Jody, who was having fun talking with her parents at the party, was very happy to see her family together. But on the other hand, Jody had to go to Neil who was in the car, and didn't want to go into the house. Jody kept begging Neil to come into the house, but Neil still refused, even several people who were present at the birthday party also came to Neil to bring him food, hoped that Neil would join them. Unfortunately, all their efforts were in vain, and he still insisted on staying in the car. Around 8.30 pm, that couple left the unfinished party, and went home. It turned out that their argument in the car turned into a big fight, and right then and there, Jody ended her relationship with Neil. The next day, Jody's mother, Lucy, received a text from a new number which was her own daughter. In the SMS, it was written that she would not come to her parents' house tonight, because she wanted to calm her anxiety, because she had broken up with Neil. She also reasoned that she had changed her number to a new number so that Neil could not contact her again. Jody also said that she had moved to another area and quit her job. It's all over, she said. But she will definitely tell the detailed story and her new life elsewhere. Jody also told her mother that she was safe with her friends, and she would definitely miss all her family. But what made Lucy doubt about the SMS from her daughter was that the text on the SMS was a little different from Jody SMS in general. There wasn't a single punctuation mark, and Lucy also found several spelling errors and incorrect grammar. In fact, according to her mother, Jody has no problems with spelling and grammar, even if Jody makes a typo, she will send the text again. Of course, the mistake could have been because Jody was in a hurry or was stressed, considering that she had just broken up with her fiancé. But once again, Lucy couldn't believe that it was Jody who sent the text message. Jody's twin sister also thought that the writing style of the SMS was completely different from the writing style that Jody usually sent. Not to mention, Jody also never left her three-year-old talking son named Elijah. Her family is very sure that Jody will never do that, because Elijah is Jody's life force. According to her family and friends, Jody wouldn't have been able to leave without taking Elijah with her. It was this belief that prompted her family to report Jody's disappearance to the police. Her family actually doesn't want to think negatively about something bad that will happen to Jody, but they also don't want to waste time looking for Jody. In fact, they were hesitant to report Jody's disappearance to the police, because they thought, maybe the police would ignore their report because of the many cases of young women who went missing and left their children at home, after arguing with their partners and finally they didn't disappear, but they suddenly left the house voluntarily. However, all their assumptions were refuted after the police paid attention to Jody's disappearance. Detectives from the police began investigating this case. They found that there was activity from Jody's bank account at one of the ATM centers in the city center not far from her parents' house, for the withdrawal of $250. Initially this information brought fresh air to Jody's family, but the police thought differently, they wondered whether the withdrawal of money was really done by Jody or was someone else using his debit card. This is where the police started interrogating all of Jody's family, relatives and friends, to ask for information. But among all of them, no one could provide information about Jody's whereabouts, apart from her fiancé, Neil, because he was the last person to see Jody. In his statement, Neil told the police that after they returned home from the birthday party, they continued arguing all the way home, and Jody even threw her engagement ring onto the main road. During the argument, Neil also said that Jody last went with an unknown man and woman, using a red Nissan X-Trail. The police, who received the report, immediately combed the highway along which Neil and Jody were traveling, looking for the engagement ring that Jody had thrown away. In a police statement that was not released to the media, Neil is actually the person who is of most interest in this case, because he is the only witness who is useful for the investigation, and the police do not yet have a new name other than Neil's name. The police immediately conducted a search around the house where Jody and Neil lived, but they still didn't find any clues, the police couldn't even find the ring that Jody had thrown away, even though Neil had indicated its location. The case of Jody's disappearance is starting to attract attention from the public. Family and friends appeared in the media to report on developments in the search for Jody, even Neil's mother, Margaret Archer, also appeared in front of journalists' cameras, and said that everyone expected her future daughter-in-law to return because her grandson, Elijah, really needed a mother. Neil also appeared several times in interviews with journalists while holding Elijah, and said that he was waiting for Jody at home. However, recordings of Neil's interviews with journalists show Neil's very calm condition, and this attitude apparently disturbed the minds of the people who watched it. 
Currently, the police are again digging for information regarding the activity of withdrawing money from Jody's account which was carried out the day after she disappeared. The police also asked for CCTV footage from the ATM machine. They were quite surprised to get a video that the withdrawal of $250 was not made by Jody or Neil, but by a woman wearing a hoodie and a hood covering her head. Of course, the police suspected that the woman wanted to hide from the camera's view, so that her identity could not be traced. But it didn't take long for the police to reveal the woman's identity. Detectives discovered that the person who withdrew money from Jody's account was Margaret Archer, Neil's mother. What she did made the police suspect her of committing theft. However, it is not known on what basis the theft was carried out. The police's initial assumption was that Margaret took Jody's debit card and withdrew the money after Jody disappeared. It is possible that Margaret needed money and stole the card, or it could be that Margaret asked for the card directly from Jody, because Margaret and her future son-in-law were quite close. But when Margaret was questioned, she denied allegations that she had made the withdrawals. After the interrogation was carried out, the police still released Margaret on bail, because the police did not have enough evidence to identify Margaret as a suspect. However, from this finding, the police were increasingly encouraged to carry out a more thorough investigation regarding Margaret's activities after Jody disappeared. During a search of the Archer family home, police found two shopping receipts from two different stores. The two receipts recorded the purchase of 10 bags of cement from a hardware store and 10 bags of cement from another store. Not only that, Margaret also bought a wheelbarrow carrying sand. The purchase was deemed inappropriate, so the police wanted to confirm, did Margaret really buy everything, or not? The police immediately carried out a search at the location of the shop written on the shopping receipt. And that's right, CCTV recorded Margaret's car visiting two different shops just three days after Jody disappeared. From the CCTV footage, it can be seen that Margaret bought a very large amount of cement, but the question is, why does she need so much cement? Buying construction materials is not a crime, but for some reason detectives are very curious and want to get definite answers about the purchase. Moreover, the total amount of purchases from the two receipts was almost the same as the amount of money Margaret withdrew from Jody's debit card. Finally the police spoke to Margaret's husband, or Neil's father, Lawrence Archer. According to him, he had just returned from Tasmania, an island and state in southern Australia, a few days after Jody was reported missing. When he got home, Neil approached him and showed affection towards his father which he rarely did. Neil said that he had a gift for his father, in honor of Father's Day which falls on the first Saturday in September. This made Lawrence even more curious, so Neil took his father to the back of the house and showed him the cement-covered backyard, which Neil had just worked on. Lawrence did not expect that his son would do such a hard job, because Neil was known as a lazy and selfish son. For that work, Lawrence was very grateful to his son. From the story told, the police realized that they had succeeded in putting together a puzzle about Jody's true condition, and considered that Neil was not just a witness, but he was the main suspect in this case. At almost the same time, as the police were starting to solve the problem, Aaron Archer, Neil's younger brother, came to the police station on September 24, 2015, to report that his family had committed a terrible crime. He reported to the police that his family asked him to do certain tasks, and tried to reassure Aaron that they would be safe. But Aaron flatly rejected this request, and he chose to report it to the police. From the information obtained by the police, they finally arrested Neil on charges of murdering his fiancée, Jody Myers. The day after that's arrest, police again searched the Archer family's home in the town of Manham. When the search was carried out, police found a body buried in a shallow grave under a cement slab that they said was a Father's Day gift for Lawrence Archer. Expert doctors confirmed that the body was Jody Myers who had disappeared a month earlier. Jody's body was immediately laid to rest in a church, and hundreds of mourners attended his funeral. A few weeks later, Margaret was also arrested on charges of collaborating in the disappearance of evidence, but until the investigation was over, she still tried her best to prove her innocence. While Lawrence is assumed to know nothing about the murder, and Aaron refuses to cooperate with his mother and brother. Now the chronology of murders can be compiled by the police. What actually happened was more terrifying than the summary of the murder story that I told earlier. When Jody and Neil returned home after attending Jody's stepfather's birthday party, they had a big fight because Neil believed that Jody's parents did not approve of their relationship, even though they were engaged and even had children. That's why Neil didn't want to go into the house to celebrate his future father-in-law's birthday, but at that time Neil lost control, so he strangled Jody with the string of his hoodie until Jody stopped breathing. What was more terrible than all, Margaret had just arrived there holding Elijah when Jody was already dead. Elijah even asked several times about the condition of his mother, who was no longer moving. 
The next day, Neil forces his mother to help cover up the murder trail. There, Margaret agreed to destroy all the evidence, because she also really loved her son, so she took Jody's ATM card and asked Neil for the pin, then withdrew Jody's money from the ATM for $250. At that time she bought a new starter card and topped up her credit, and sent an SMS to Lucy pretending to be Jody. Margaret did all this because she really loved her son. She even took Elijah in her car and put him in the car, while she bought 20 bags of cement from two different shops. It is unfortunate that Elijah began to realize what had happened to his mother, and he asked his grandmother several times about his mother's whereabouts. The next day, Neil began digging a shallow grave and buried Jody there, then covered it with cement and presented the work as a surprise to his father who had just returned home. The police also obtained evidence of telephone recordings between Neil and his mother about the crimes they committed, and Neil even tried to involve his younger brother, Aaron, to cover up their crimes. He asked Aaron to burn all of Jody's clothes and belongings, but Aaron firmly refused the request, and chose to report everything to the police when he was ready, so they burned it themselves behind the house. Margaret and Neil may think they can get away with their crimes, but the more they do, the more mistakes they make. At a 2016 trial, Neil Archer pleaded guilty to the murder of Jody Myers, and in 2017 he was sentenced to life with parole after serving 22 years in prison. Meanwhile, 58-year-old Margaret, until the end of her trial, never wanted to admit guilt to the crime. From this we can conclude that Margaret never regretted her actions, until finally in 2018, she was sentenced to six and a half years in prison, because she helped hide evidence. But reportedly in June 2022, she was released on parole because of good behavior, but she had to be deported back to her homeland in England. Meanwhile, Elijah, who has grown into a child, is being cared for by Lucy, Jody's mother. That's a story about the terrible crime of a young father who was helped by his own mother, because her love was so great. Thank you for watching this video, and see you in the next case.